Dan Barnes here for Studio One Expert, and today we're going to talk about reducing your editing time with cursor awareness and some of the great tools available just from watching what's happening with your mouse. Studio One is just awesome with the visual feedback in terms of where your mouse is and in context of what you're doing. So if you have your mouse over different areas, you're going to see different mouse cursors, and we want to be really conscious of what the display is showing us because I see people all the time when I'm coaching, they'll go to do something and they don't realize they're on the wrong mouse cursor and therefore the action will fail, they get frustrated. It's actually quite easy once you have your awareness up a little bit. So let's talk about the main big principle, big picture point of view. Now the first thing that we're gonna look at are the mouse tools located up here in the toolbar and there's eight of them. We're not gonna go over all of them today, but there are some that we definitely need to go over. For example, I'm gonna turn off the smart combo tool. You should know I live there when I'm using it on a day-by-day -day basis, but for this, we're gonna start with it off, and then we'll go through and show you how I use it when it's on. But we have the arrow tool and the range tool, and if you hover over any of these, it will tell you what it does. This knife is the split tool. And just hover over each of these, and you'll get a little tool tip that will explain what that tool is, a little brief explanation. For example, this is the mute tool. So you can guess when I turn that on, I go over here, it mutes or unmutes any event that I have selected there. I'll turn this one back on. And then of course we have the listen tool. I'm gonna to skip a couple of tools that don't apply as much for editing dialogue or narration or voiceover. I'll group those all together. So if I say narration, just translate for me. It's all the same. This is editing dialogue primarily. Now we have the different tools. I do recommend that while you're learning them, you separate these and you get a really good handle on what the arrow tool can do. For example, the arrow tool is designed to do what? it selects events. And as we go through, we can have events already here that we can select. If you're editing dialogue, every take, every time you start and stop the recording, you're gonna get a new event created. And then events are your friends. I have another video on that here in a little bit, but those are great tools for adjusting your dialogue. And the arrow tool is the primary thing to select events. And then it has all sorts of other behaviors depending on the context. For example, the most obvious things are when we select an event, it highlights it. It puts a little blue outline all around the edge for us, and it adds some drag handles, those little squares and triangles in the upper corners. And so when we select an event, we also get the drag handles. And of course, when we mouse over it, we get a different mouse cursor telling us, hey, we can probably do something there. And you can, of course, drag and change the event gain. Some people call that the clip gain if they come from another product. In the corners, we have some more drag handles. Now notice when I'm in the proper spot, I receive the finger there, the hand cursor, and then I can manipulate that. If I move to this corner and I get an edge seam, you notice I can't grab the drag handle there. So I need to make sure that I get the little handle. And once I do, I can manipulate it. So they're giving us some great visual feedback. These are just a couple examples. There's another drag handle right here, and then I can drag and change the way the fade is. Now here's a little bonus. If I'm very zoomed in or I have a very long event, that drag handle is no longer visible. So they give us some visual feedback here. For example, if I move up to this top line, I get the hand again. And I can manipulate that and that is identical to when I have and can see the drag handle and grab it. So some people think initially that you have to have the drag handle in order to make this work and you really don't. What you have to do is be cursor aware and notice that the hand has appeared here. And then if you drag, you can use that just as well. You don't need the drag handle. That's just there to make it discoverable, to have people notice, hey, there's something there. Let me see what I can do with that. Same with this. It's discoverable. But anytime you get the hand cursor, you can drag that down. And that's just a little bonus there. If you have really long events or you have one that's really zoomed in, you won't see the drag handle. So those are just a couple examples, there's more. As long as you are paying attention to the cursor changing all the time, then it becomes very easy. If we move up here, the arrow tool can allow us to zoom in and out. And if we're right up here, it changes. And this is a part of being aware of our mouse cursor. You'll notice at the top that turns into a pencil. Well, guess what? If you click, you can drag that and that's gonna be your loop. You're setting your loop range there. I'll turn that off for now. The point is, is that there are different cursors depending on where we are, depending on what we have showing, and the tools up here are the first thing to become aware of. But no, there's still some contact sensitive things going on, and the arrow tool is critical that you understand that and events. 
Well, the second tool that we're going to use regularly is the range tool. And when we turn that on, and I do recommend in the beginning, if you're new to this, that you use each tool individually for just a little bit and get a feel for what they do so that then when we combine them with the smart combo tool, it'll be far more obvious. For example, if we're with the range tool here, anytime we can see this plus sign with the crosshair, then we can click any place and it'll just set the cursor for us. And that's great when you want to play something back. If we happen to be on the arrow tool, of course, it will select an event. And that's totally different, a single click setting an event, grabbing an event, highlighting an event, as opposed to the range tool where single clicks are going to give us a totally different behavior here. We're now setting the cursor over and over again. So that's pretty obvious. Now when we combine the tools, it's important that we notice that in the top half of our audio, from the center line up, we get the range tool. From the center line down, we have the arrow tool, which just means we can quickly go back and forth between selecting an event or setting our cursor. Set the cursor, set the event. Now what I recommend to people when they first start is rather than getting just barely over the center line, start by going right in the first quarter, so halfway from the top to the middle, right here, and set the cursor there. When you want the arrow tool, use it in this region here. Now you don't have to, you can just be barely over it. Once you see the change, you can use either of those two cursors, but I recommend in the beginning, you're just much more explicit about it. But some other cursors that we really need to focus in on are what I call the edge cursors or the seam cursors, depending on the context. I might use those interchangeably. These edge cursors, you see two of them right here, depending on what you're doing, and I'll explain them in a minute. But then when we go down to the bottom here, you'll notice these two edge cursors are the same. But if I go over to this edge, for some reason it looks like a golf club to me facing both ways. But as I move up, I now get the same cursor here that I'm receiving over on this seam. So what's going on there? Well, the first thing to notice is the edge cursors are slightly different from the cursors when they're, when they're in the middle of the audio. These are two thirds, one third. In the top two thirds from here as we go down the seam, when we hit the last third, then it switches over to this golf club, which is really the dual adjustment cursor, as opposed to these are individual event adjustments. Watch this, that just moves one event. This one on this side moves the other event. And when they're actually totally perfectly together, then we can go down to the bottom and get one that will move both at once. So there's actually three different cursors that are occurring on this particular seam. One cursor, two cursors, three cursors. But we move over to this other seam, or it looks like a seam, and we get one cursor, two cursors, and no matter where we are here, we'll never get the golf club cursor or the dual move cursor. And that's because this seam is not perfectly aligned together. If I zoom in enough, you'll see there's actually some overlap on that one. And because those two do not come together perfectly, it's down in the millisecond range where it's off. But because they don't, we are not going to get an alternate cursor in the lower third. So every once in a while, you're going to look at them and say, well, what's the difference? Well, there's a huge difference. There's actually some other types of cursors when I get to the lower third. You notice that one has a little X next to it. Why? Well, it's very logical. It may not be obvious, but it's logical as to why we get the golf club cursor here without the X. We move over here, we get it with the X. The reason is this. In this case, if I zoom in, you'll notice we have a crossfade. So that's telling us we're moving the crossfade as well as the actual seam between the two events where this other one, no matter how much I zoom in, there is no crossfade. Those two pieces of audio are just perfectly aligned. And when they're perfectly aligned, there is no crossfade to move. Therefore, I won't get the crossfade cursor right here with the little X. Here I don't get it, here I do get it. And it's just because it's a different type of seam. But up at the top, I'm gonna manipulate part of it. Now you'll also notice I happen to have two events selected here at once and these seam cursors will allow us to manipulate multiple events at once if we select more than one. And control, control Z, Command Z, undo are your friend in this case. Let me just select a single one. So now I have a single event selected and of course now it'll do what I expect. It's working on these two because this moves both of them at once. I go to the top and I now am manipulating this 
piece of audio all by itself, or this piece of audio all by itself. And even when they're next to each other, right here, I'm gonna get the two seams that I can use, and you just pay attention to which way it's facing. That means I'm gonna manipulate the piece of audio on the left, and even though they're together, this means I'm gonna manipulate this piece of audio. So there's some logic going on behind the scenes, so don't let it confuse you that these are different. They're different because the seam is actually different. There's a slight overlap behind this one. If I move over to this one here, I get the X sign because there's a crossfade here. Here, there's no crossfade. So Studio One's being really smart and providing us visual feedback so that we can make sure that when we start dragging, we're gonna get the action we want. And once you're aware of them, it becomes very easy. Now we move down to here, and of course we get the I-beam cursor because we're in a layer which is gonna do something different. In this case, I'm gonna replace what's in this layer. For me, room tone. I could get rid of that little breath there with room tone if I wanted. But you'll notice that I also get the crossfade first cursor here. I get the crossfade cursor. Crossfade cursor, crossfade cursor. Well, what do you think I can do when I have the crossfade cursor? I can manipulate that and change it, just like I can up here, same thing. Visually consistent. Now, one thing to note, if my audio is too narrow, all that stops working in terms of the smart cursor. I still can get some cursors, but what happens is if it's too narrow, the smart cursor ends up getting shut off and the only thing I have is the arrow tool. So once your audio reaches about a half inch tall, don't quote me on that exact measurement, depends on your monitor, then you end up getting the smart cursor where it's gonna go back and forth between the top half and the bottom half and your seam cursors are gonna work the way you expect. But if your audio is too narrow, you don't get all the different cursors because there's just no room for them to do that. So we get some cursors, but if you watch, you visually can see what cursor you're working with and there make your tracks taller if you're gonna do precision work. It's just easier and you get the visual feedback. Now there's a whole other class of cursors that I haven't talked about and I'm just gonna give you a tiny taste of them so that you're aware and then you can explore beyond that. For example, there's a whole set of keyboard modifiers that can be used, and when you do that, you're gonna get some different cursors, and I alluded to one of them earlier. So that's the on the seams, if we add the Alt or we add the Option, depending on your platform, you're gonna get this cursor. So how do you learn that? How do you know that? How do you find all these things? Well, I have another video on Studio One Expert about the info view. If you turn on the info view, and then I'll break it out here. Let me put it right next to this seam. So now while I'm on the seam, you'll notice immediately to the right of where my cursor is, is there's a Alt key, because I happen to be on the PC. If you're on the Mac, that will say Option, and it says Stretch Event. It even shows you a little bit of what, about what the cursor will look like. So there's what the cursor is, and you can see it highlights on that what I have selected. Now I'm not gonna go over all the different cursors, but there's a lot of them that you can use here that will do different things. This one will define tempo. I certainly should have said earlier that if I'm in the middle of this this event here and I use the Control Alt or Option Command Option on the Mac, but you would see it there in the info view, then you have the slip cursor, which allows you to move some audio back and forth. Let me move over to something else where I might be able to slip it a little more. There we can slip more. It just depends on the source audio and we can slip this quite a bit but that's the slip cursor. And so how did I learn about that? Well, in the info view here, right approximately equal with where I am right now, there is going to be a cursor available. As long as I'm in the arrow tool, I get different tools up here because this is the range tool, which means there are different keyboard modifiers that work the, with the range tool, and there are different keyboard modifiers that work with the event tool or the arrow tool. So watch, I'm up here, I get a set of options. I'm down here, I get a set of options. So I'm not going through all those, but find the video on the info view. That is an awesome tool for learning more and more and more about some of the things you can do in Studio One to speed up what you're doing. Keyboard shortcuts are excellent. I highly recommend you learn your keyboard shortcuts. Also, learn your keyboard modifiers if you wanna do this stuff quickly and efficiently. There are hundreds of them. And that's an exaggeration, but I'm, there's probably a hundred of them. And you'll quickly notice that if you're in different places around the interface, there are just different options. 
I've learned so many things through this. So do go watch that video. I hope this helped you be more aware of your cursors at the different points and the way they work. If you have questions or comments, please let me know. Studio One Expert is just a wealth of information. I can't believe how many good articles there are by a bunch of great people beyond the things that I'm doing. So if you haven't checked that out, be sure you're there. Be sure you're looking at the articles. Check out the other videos. And of course, this is Don Barnes for Studio One Expert. I look forward to seeing you on the wires.